If there's one flat earther out there who still thinks they're making a difference, it's David Weiss of DITRH. His belief that flat earth is growing and that people are waking up daily is just pure delusional. We all know that flat earth is dying quicker than my hair follicles. So today, we're gonna finally sit down DITRH for good. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick nod to the sponsors of today's video, Hover. Hover is a super easy to use service that allows you to create your own custom domain name or email address. You and your business are unique, right? So shouldn't your online presence reflect that? Of course it should. Hover will help you stand out and help grow your personal brand. Not doing this would be like building with little tiny bricks that stick together instead of Lego. Hover has over 400 domain name extensions to choose from, including all the classics and fun niche extensions too. Personally, I like their extensions simandan.global and simandan.earth. You really should create a custom email address for yourself and for your business to look professional, which doesn't end in at Hotmail or at Gmail, but rather your own personal brand. Hover also allows you to add your domain name to website builders with a few simple clicks. So you can easily integrate your new domain name into your pre-existing website. Plus there is no annoying upsells and it's got a clean user interface with a best in class customer support team. Go to hover.com slash Simandan for 10% off your first purchase and to start personalizing your online brand today. Right, back to today's video with DITRH, which by the way was voted for by my lovely patrons in the monthly poll. Huge, huge thanks to them. If you'd like to get involved with that too, the link for it is in the description. So, DITRH's video is simply entitled, Your World is a Lie. And it looks like he's stitched together a few of his appearances over the last year or so. Right, NASA is evil, okay? Their logo is a snake's tongue. I feel sorry for snakes. They get such a raw deal. Snakes are cool. Well, I like them anyway. Okay, they show us pictures of Mars, which are Devon Island in Greenland. Okay, the one on the left is, is, is Devon Island, and the one on the right is Mars, they tell us. Actually, that picture of Mars is not one supplied by NASA. Someone has doctored it to appear so. Funnily enough, NASA has just landed Perseverance on the surface of Mars, and it sent back photos like this. Absolutely incredible. Huge congratulations to you, NASA. Look at the clouds, they're stepped and repeated. The same clouds. Yes, he has admitted that some of the features, like clouds, were digitally added. However, it doesn't mean that it was a fake image altogether. Just that circle is what we see. That's what we see. So you have to believe that all of that other land outside of that circle is on the other side of that ball. The problem here, of course, is distortion. The 2D map that you're comparing it to is distorted. That's what happens when you try and depict a 3D surface onto a 2D one. At 500 miles, 550 miles an hour, the Earth curve drops at a mile every two minutes, okay? So the pilot would constantly have to be nosing down. He would constantly have to be nosing down, otherwise he's gonna fly right off into space. The Earth isn't the size of a watermelon. The sun just stops going down, it sits there. This is just super sped up. It sits there, and then it just fades. Shut up. Yeah, it just fades away. Here it is again. It just fades away. It's, meanwhile, it went from up here to here in five minutes, and then it sat here in 10 minutes, for 10 minutes. And then it just got smaller and smaller and it faded away. And that's because the sun that we see is traveling in a circle and the air density becomes opaque over distance, over short distance. We discussed this before actually, and many, many people got in touch with me to tell me what was really going on here. As expected, due to the intense zoom, this was an artifact caused by the camera. If the sun really was going in a circle, then why did the sun not set at a more horizontal angle? You know, when we look up at Mars, which is in the night sky at the time of this recording, um, you, we don't know if it's the size of a basketball or, the, or, or 100 miles or 1,000 miles or, or wide, or we don't know anything because we don't know the distance. All we see is a light brighter than any other star. It's supposed to be a dusty, dirty ball millions and millions of miles farther from the sun than we are and reflecting light back to us as bright, brighter than a star. None of that makes any sense. No, that doesn't, and I'll agree with you on that. I've always wondered that. How do the planets shine brighter than the stars? Oh, let me think. Maybe because the planets are extremely close to us compared to all the other stars in the sky, and they're reflecting light from a giant nuclear reactor. So what's wrong with this picture? Is the curve of the Earth the right amount, the wrong amount? You know, is well, what's, uh, in his, what's, what's in his helmet? I can't see what, it from here. What, you know, what's in his helmet? The what's answer is, 
did you know that NASA's training facility is at the National Buoyancy Lab where they have a replica of the space station in a gigantic pool that has green screens around it, right? Oh. Right? This picture so was taken in a pool. This picture was taken in a pool. So why don't we see bubbles? Um, like they do. The, the bubbles in space happens all the time. Little bubbles when they're moving around will pop out, but sometimes they're filming sideways. Sometimes they're filming upside down because you could do that in a pool and the bubble will go sideways. Look very closely at this clip here. There are particles of frozen water, what you call bubbles, moving in all different directions. If this is filmed in water, how do those bubbles do that? These are the two official photos, but they don't use the word photo ever when they talk about art. They say pictures and images. Um, this one was on everyone's iPhone. The artist that made it, that told us how he made it in Photoshop, um, is Robert Simmons. And he, he talked about how he, he Photoshopped the clouds in and he made the, he's like, well, there's more algae here. So he had data and he says, I'll, I'll make this green. Yeah, we, we lost the technology and we can't bring it back again. Right, and, uh, Don Pettit, Don Pettit, I think he's actually retarded. The person he's talking about here is Don Petit, a man who has a bachelor's and doctorate in chemical engineering. Yet DITRH calls him retarded. Unbelievable. And that is exactly why they need to keep this a secret, because this is their most important secret. This is why they have the fake space programs. This is why they, they, they have the Antarctic Treaty. They, they, they are sent, you, know, you can go on YouTube and look up stuff about Bigfoot or uh, aliens, it's all over the place. But Flat Earth, they're censoring the crap out of it. You can't find the good stuff on Flat Earth because they don't want people to know. People were waking up faster than they thought they would and they're shutting it down. Yeah, no, it's not that it's being censored. You can find Flat Earth stuff all over the place. It's more that people aren't really interested in it anymore. Take a look at this. In regards to people searching for it, you're at a five year low, buddy. Currently, more people are interested in pubic hair. Oof. Tough one to take there, David. This, this photo right here was taken by the Cassini spacecraft, I think it was Cassini, going at 60,000 miles an hour. In, how far is Pluto from the sun? So far that the sun is like a star, but it's this well lit going at 60,000 miles an hour and it caught this beautiful picture with a friggin' Pluto's head on it. They're mocking us. It wasn't Cassini, it was New Horizons. And yes, they took that photo. It was taken by New Horizons lorry camera, but in four different parts. Also, these photos were combined with color data from other instruments on board. Here's something, you know, um, Mar uh, uh, Jupiter is, uh, is a gassy, stormy, giant planet, right? These two pictures are taken over two years apart. They said, oh, look, we, we got uh, this crazy aurora, right? Do you, do you use any photo software? Could you do that in under yeah. a minute? Yeah, yeah I can minute. do that. You could probably do it better, okay? But if you lay these two over each other, every single little detail is exactly the same. It's just this one is a little lighter than this one. They're the exact same photos. So you have to believe two years later that all of those windstorms and everything are haven't changed. It's the exact same photo. It's mockery. They're mocking the stupidity of the people of this world. Okay, if David had bothered to done a teeny tiny bit of research on this one, he would have known that they are the same image and NASA doesn't claim otherwise. The aurora part is lifted from some actual video of the aurora on Jupiter and superimposed onto the 2014 image. And that guy said he could Photoshop a real one. Brilliant. Better than real life. <sighs> All of your God-given senses tell you that you're flat and stationary, okay? Um, but they tell us that we're spinning and we believe it because they told us and we have no proof. This image behind me is showing what our solar system's doing. The Earth is spinning at over a thousand miles an hour at the equator. That's faster than the speed of sound. So when you watch a sunset, you have to believe that you're falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound and that's making the sun appear to set. We're also orbiting around the sun at 66,600, interesting number, miles per hour around the, the Earth, okay? Around, around the sun, okay? That's, so we're orbiting the sun, but the moon is orbiting us. The sun right. is 400 times bigger than the moon, but 400 times farther than the moon. That's why they look like the same, same, same size. But then you watch the sunrise and set, and you watch the moon rise and set, they look like they're the same size, they take the same path, but you have to believe what I just told you. Not only are we spinning at 1,000 miles per hour, orbiting at 66,000 miles per hour, we're chasing the sun at over half a million miles an hour, flying through space at over half a million miles an hour, and that entire system is moving sideways at 1.2 million miles per hour, okay? But, but somehow, you know, while all of that is going on, you know, the, all of our senses tell us that nothing is moving. You know, all of our senses tell us that we're still and stationary and you can have perfectly glass lakes reflecting mountains. Possibly the silliest argument ever from flat earthers. We feel nothing, therefore we're not moving. Newton's first law applies here and that clip you showed of the solar system moving is not correct. Where we're curving around the curve, by the way, if you're going 500 miles an hour in a straight line in a car, you can drink water, you're fine, you can light a candle, but as soon as you start taking a turn, and that's what the spinning and orbiting and all the motions are, they're circles, um, things are gonna slosh all over the place. But we have calm, beautiful lakes, okay? Perfectly glass. All of your common sense tell us that you're flat and stationary, and only nonsense tells us otherwise. Driving a car around a corner is not the same as a planet orbiting a star. 
the car will produce a much, much, much larger centrifugal force. I'm in the space station, look. I'm floating, <laughs> I'm in space. Here's the Red Bull jump, okay? So we looked at the land here, that's planet New Mexico. All of that land is New Mexico. <laughs> this guy lands, and you think about this. They went up there for like three and a half hours and then he jumped. The Earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour to the east. It's spinning to the east. So he went, if the Earth is spinning to the east, he goes up, he's gonna land out in the ocean, right? No, because the atmosphere moves with Earth. You know this, David. Also, that was a fisheye lens, which is causing that exaggerated curve. Because it's spinning to the east, that means he's going west. He landed a couple hundred miles east of where he took off from, right? Check this out. Here's the flight route from Santiago, Chile, uh, all the way up to, to Australia. It goes all the way north, across the United States, and then all the way down to, to, um, to Australia. You see that big arch? When in fact, they could have just gone across Antarctica or stayed at their 55 degrees south latitude, gone around the short way, which is a third of that distance, um, and gotten there, but they can't because that's not the layout of the Earth. This is the layout of the Earth. And those same flying routes are a straight line. There's a straight line. Well, that would definitely that's make things easier. And you've just debunked yourself. First off, you can get direct flights from Santiago, Chile to Australia. Look at this. Secondly, the flight path you propose takes around 14 hours non-stop. Why then does it take a similar time from New York to Tokyo when on the very map you just showed, they are much, much closer together? So above us, the Earth is supposed that the ball Earth is spinning at uh, a thousand uh, a thousand miles per hour at the equator. Okay, so if you go into um, into the app, there's a, the top button will bring you to the current winds. And if I set it for forty thousand feet, these are the winds at forty thousand feet. These white and pink areas are winds that are two to three hundred miles per hour. That's at forty thousand feet. But think about this: they're spinning on the ball eastward. Okay, that means that they're outrunning the spin of the Earth. So. What's the issue with that? Doesn't prove or disprove anything. Meanwhile, on the image that you've just shown, an explanation as to what drive the winds over your disc would be great. Thank you. Ah, okay. Thanks for that. Well, there we go. David Weiss of DITRH thoroughly debunked. The offer I gave you, David, over email still very much stands. An interview with me pre-recorded. Thank you all very, very much for watching today. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like the video and subscribe as well, bottom right hand corner. Just enough time to once again thank Hover for sponsoring today. Remember, visit hover.com slash simandan to get 10% off your first purchase and start personalizing your online brand today. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend, and I'll see you all on Tuesday where we're going back inside the hollow earth. See you then.